Hi guys, it's Denise from Salvaged Inspirations. Thanks for joining me today. Today's furniture painting project are these dated nightstands and I'm going to be transforming them with a 3D stencil, uh, which is also called a raised stencil, a textured stencil. I've done this many times before and it really, really can update an old, not so great looking piece and I've used plenty of products. I've tried out plenty of products. Today I'll be using a new one and sharing that with you. So let's see how it goes. I will set up and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm all set up. And before I actually start applying um, the 3D stencil fiber paste for this 3D stencil, I just wanted to show you a few other products that I've used for these raised stencils. Um, so you have a choice. This Durham's Hard Rock Putty, uh, you just mix it with water and that can be used as a raised stencil. I've used that, that works good and it is very durable. I've also used Dixie Bell Mud and this is used to, you can also use it to fill hardware holes or little nicks or um, scratches in furniture, but it works nicely for 3D stenciling. This you can get at any Home Depot. Um, it's the Dry Dex by DAP. And um, again, it's just uh, the perfect texture to go over a stencil and create a raised stencil or 3D stencil. And it's pink. this particular one is pink. And then when it dries, it's white. So you know that it's dry and ready to sand. So this works very nicely also. I've used this on quite a few pieces. And today, I'm actually gonna be trying this new product. It's 3D stencil fiber paste from Redesign with Prima. I'm going to be tinting it for the night tables that I'm working on. So this, like I said, this is gonna be the first time I'm trying this out. So uh, you guys can join me for that and I'll let you know what I think. Um, other supplies that I like to have on hand, um, shop towels, Something to apply the stencil or the fiber paste with, the raised stencil, which today I'm just using a plastic putty knife. Uh, I am a glove fanatic, so always wear these. I'm gonna be tinting it with a paint and I'm gonna use Dixie Belle's Coffee Bean. I actually just spilt this before I started shooting this video. It's all on my floor right now, but there's enough in there because there won't, uh, see. <laughs> I, I won't need a whole lot, so yeah, we'll tint it with this. And I'm using this, I'm gonna get it off. I'm using this gorgeous 3D um, stencil. Okay, so what I've done is I've lined up these nightstand drawers. This is the top drawer. This is the second drawer, uh, the bottom drawer. And I'm lining them up so I can have the stencil pattern go right down and non-stop so it all matches up. This is the stencil I'm using. It's uh, Prima's, it's redesigned with Prima's uh, 3D stencil, but you can use any stencil with this. You can use this uh, paper stencils, you can use regular stencils, you can do those uh, sticky stencils. Uh, the texture will work with anything. So what I'm gonna do is just place it, the pattern uh, where I think looks great. I'm liking this. I'm going to take some of the 3D stencil paste on my applicator. And I find working on a flat surface like this much easier than actually having these drawers inside the piece, inside the nightstand and working like vertically. When I lay it horizontally, it just makes everything so much easier for me. So if that's an option for you, that's a great way to do it. And you just want to make sure the stencil is straight before I start applying this. Straight and centered. And once you get it exactly where you want it, you just put it on. Just make sure that the stencil doesn't move while you're applying it. So hold on to it so it doesn't slide all over the place. This is 
nice and thick. It applies very, very nicely, actually. And I like the gray we tinted it to. I thought it was going to be a bit darker, but I'm quite happy with what we're doing here. When I restyle furniture, it usually takes its own direction. <laughs> Likes doing its own thing, so I just go with it. Okay, once the stenciling paste is is on part of your stencil, it's it's kind of adhered for you, right? Because the weight of this uh, 3D stencil paste is kind of keeping the design down for me. Okay, let's do the into the second drawer. And again, it's so the pattern is going to continue from one drawer to the next, nice and even. Yeah, this applies really nice. Like I said, this is the first time I'm trying this product and I'm liking it very much. Applies really, really nicely. Now, if you wanted a more textured look, you don't have to even it out. You can kind of, you know, create texture like that, and then you could glaze it or wax it, and that'll create a lot of texture in the pattern. If you want a more uniform pattern look or raised stencil look, then you skim it, which I'll show you how I do that. I'm just making sure that the entire stencil is all filled in. The weight of this stenciling paste is holding it down. As you can see, I don't even have to hold it down at this point. Uh, I'm going from edge to edge, but of course you can decide on what areas you want the stencil. You can just have it like maybe in the middle of the drawer, maybe just around the hardware. You can pick and choose wherever you want to put it. And now I'm just going to skim the excess off and skim the excess off and I'll just put the rest back on my plate. Just using a paper plate to mix this. This is looking really nice. I love this pattern. I'll go the opposite direction just to make sure it's nice and smooth. Again, I'm looking for a smoother, more precise look rather than a more textured look. It just depends on what kind of look you want to go for. And now for the fun. Okay, let's lift this off and see what it looks like. Wow, oh my God, I love it. That looks really good. Okay, for this, you should probably wash it uh, shortly after use, uh, just so it doesn't dry on and, uh, you know, muck up your stencil. So I'm just gonna throw that in my sink. There you go. Doesn't that look great? I'm loving this. So what I'll do is the other two drawers and then I'll be back to show you how I sand and paint the top. It's 24 hours later and this 3D stencil fiber paste actually took longer to dry than I expected. I'm guessing it's because I added the chalk paste and the Dixie Belle paint to tint it. Um, so I came back down to my studio after two hours. It was still very wet. I came back down after four hours last night and it was still fairly wet. It was half dry, half wet, so I couldn't sand it or anything. Uh, so again, this is 24 hours later. I don't know exactly how long it took to dry, but it's rock solid now. Um, I started sanding with a 220 and it's so rock solid that it really didn't take away the rough edges at all, which I'm going to show you the rough edges. Hope you can get a close up of um, how rough these edges are. I mean, you could leave it like this, but it doesn't feel very nice. And uh, for furniture, I think uh, touch is just as important as look. So what I've done is I have a sanding block 
and I'm taking a 120 grit sandpaper, just wrapping it around and just giving it a sand down like this. You can go either way just to get all the bumps, nooks and crannies off it, just to smooth it out. And it is rock solid, like it's really on there and it's dried super, super hard. So I'm really pleased with that and I'm really pleased with the look of it. Um, and yeah, after a light sanding, it's smooth to the touch. So what I went ahead and I, I actually painted the other one. So this is what it looks like when it is all painted. And so the stencil has been sanded and it's been painted in fluff by Dixie Belle. And what I'm gonna do with this one is the 120 is actually a little too harsh for it because I just wanna bring out um, the texture of this stencil, but I don't want it to be prominent. So just let me move back. And what I'm doing is wrapping a 320 around my sanding block. And I just like to share how great it looks once the paint starts coming off. You just lightly sand it and you're gonna start seeing the dark come through. pretty subtle look. I just love it. Um, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and finish these up. I'm going to finish painting this one um, and giving it a soft sand with a 320 and then top coat. I haven't decided whether I'm going to be doing a glaze, uh, maybe a darker wax. I'm not sure how I'm going to spit that up yet, uh, but I'll be sure to come back and show you the end result. So again, I'm Denise at Salvaged Inspirations. Uh, feel free to subscribe at salvagedinspirations.com for do-it-yourself furniture painting techniques and tutorials. Um, feel free to subscribe here on YouTube. I'm also on social media, Instagram and Facebook, Salvaged Inspirations on all of them. Uh, thanks so much for joining me today and have a good one, guys. Bye.